Hello and welcome to another edition of Dextop Tips. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can build your very own external helper tool to format, automatically format your DAX measures from directly inside Power BI uh, Desktop. So you'll get the op get the problem. You might have a PBIX file with a whole bunch of DAX measures. Uh, these could be stored in measures, uh, DAX, DAX expressions. These could be stored in measures, calculated columns, or calculated tables. Uh, so they might look like this. Uh, we have a measure here that's not very nicely formatted. What I'm going to show you how to do today is add an icon to external tools um, that will iterate through your model, find every single DAX expression, and if it's not formatted, send it off to DAXformatter.com. DAXformatter.com is a wonderful tool. Uh, if you haven't already used it, you can go to DAXformatter.com and just type in some fairly ugly looking DAX, uh, such as evaluate. This one's been formatted, <laughs> already done. Let's go on and put some pretty ugly looking DAX. Evaluate some ugly looking DAX. Excuse my typing there. And if we hit the uh, formatter button, the DAX formatter tool just chugs away and comes back and makes it a lot, lot nicer to look at. Um, now we don't want to do this by copying and pasting uh, measure by measure or expression by expression. So we want to build a, a, a tool from scratch using Visual Studio Code. So let's fire this up. I'm going to open Visual Studio Code and I'm going to create a brand new folder. Uh, so let's say open folder. And I'm going to call this, in my example, a new folder called E6. Don't you just love my uh, uh, completely creative and imaginative naming conventions? But this is a blank folder. I'm going to go into this folder, select it, and it's going to be completely empty. We're starting from scratch. That's all this is doing. Now, the first thing we always need to do is uh, check to make sure we've got the SDK um, and installed for .NET. So let's just um, check that first. So dot net hyphen hyphen info and have a look at the output and this is telling me we've got uh, the 5.0 SDK installed you might have the 3.1 installed that's fine um, both 3.1 or 5 will work just make sure it's uh, one of those numbers or higher so that's cool so now we can go ahead and create our console app dot dot net new console And here we go. That's created a new project file. We have a program.cs file. This is the hello world. And if I open the pro program.cs file, we should be able to hit the F5 button uh, once we get the dialog to say, do we want to uh, add the assets to E6? Yes, we do. Let's run this. And what we should see is a, in the output, the hello world appear in the uh, terminal window or the debug console window. There it is. Yes, fantastic. We're underway. Um, okay, so the next thing we need to do is add the packages. Uh, and there are two packages required for this one. There's the standard uh, new git gallery analysis services.net core retail. Now the link for this is in the blog page. But what we want is the .net CLI code. So let's just grab that code, copy it into the terminal window and into the terminal window, not the debug console. How silly of me. Okay, here we go. .NET add package, Microsoft.analysis services, net core retail, AMD in the latest version. And here we go. So this is actually adding the helper files to this project that we just created. The second helper proje project that we need is the, uh, the, the Newton soft JSON uh, helper file. So let's just go up. We'll probably have this in my history. There we go. .NET add package Newton soft .json. And that's it. They're, they're the only two um, packages that we need for this project to work. The next thing we need is to go and get the code for the project. Now I've got the link in the, um, in the blog file. Um, but let's go and find uh, this, the, the, the code. So what, what you need to do is just go and download the file called program.cs. Let's open this in a text editor. Okay, cool. Now this might seem, seem confusing. I've got two copies of program.cs open in my, in my single Visual Studio Code project, but all we're doing is uh, opening the one from the asset file, which has about 200 lines of code 
There we go, 288 lines of code. We're going to control all, control copy, jump back to the hello world version and replace the entire uh, data set, uh, uh, all the code. There we go. And we can close this off. We don't need this anymore. Wonderful. Excellent. Now, if I run this right now, it'll probably fail because it's hard coded to a port number that um, was used when I last um, had a, a, a Power BI project. So we need to update this, this number at line 16 to test this. I'm going to open a, um, a Power BI desktop file that I have got here, and I need to go and grab the, um, the uh, port number that this is currently open on. Remember, every time you close Power BI desktop and reopen it, the port number changes. Now, there are a number of ways to get, the, number of ways to get this. Um, I'm going to use my uh, helper tools um, that I uh, blogged about in a recent article, and I'm going to go and run item number three, which shows me the port number. And the port number is 63390 for me, not for you. This is this is for me. I should be able to paste this in. And I can run this now. If I hit the F5 button, I shouldn't see any issues. And if I... Uh... Oh, no, this, there are some issues. What I need to do is, um, because I'm actually displaying this on a console window, I need to go over to the helper files in this project and update them to use the external terminal rather than the internal one. So we click up here to look at the files. We open the VS Code launch.json file. And here we go. And this is, this is um, there are, there's IntelliSense here, IntelliSense. So I can hit the, uh, <laughs> I can hit the quote button. And here we go, it's offering me, we want the external, ter external terminal um, uh, value for the console property in the launch.json. Let's just close and save that. And try again. See how we go. I always, I always forget that step. Uh, one day I'll remember. And what we can see down here is the it recognizes that um, there are one, two, three, four, uh, fifteen odd measures uh, expressions in my measure in my in my PBIX file. Most of them are already, already formatted. There's one that's detected that it um, that it wasn't formatted, um, and that's because I had deliberately gone and and um, and modified it to be ugly. And here we can see that it's actually it has worked. So that's fantastic. Um, Let's break this again. Let's put some carriage returns in. Let's make this look quite ugly. You know, unformat this, or, or we could take all the um, all the um, carriage returns out. I'm press a key to close that down. And I'm going to go back to my external helper tool and run this again in, in Visual Studio Code. Bring up the window. And sure enough, it's detected that most of the measures are already formatted. The one I just changed wasn't. It's it's showing us here that it's now formatting that DAX, and you can see here in the screen um, if you were really sharp that um, that it, it tidied this up in front of our own eyes. Now this is all cool from Visual Studio Code, but what we really want to do is have a button here on the external tools that we can click, so we don't have to worry about loading this up all the time. So let's let's do that as our next step. So I'm going to close off. I'm going to close Power BI Desktop and s not save it. And I'm going to go back to my asset folder and grab the dexformatter.pbitool.json file. We're going to copy that and I'm going to put it into my external tool folder. Now the external tool folder should be something like your uh, C common files, Microsoft shared, Power BI desktop external tools. Now by dropping this file into this folder, the next time Power BI desktop opens, it will add this the, the, all the details from this um, uh, JSON file as a button on the external toolkit. It's as easy as that, but let's edit, to, edit this first. Uh, so, because we're going to have to update the path. Open with code. Okay, so we need to update the value of this path property. Now, this is currently showing um, where perhaps I have built a, uh, another version of this, but I want to use the, um, the, the code, the executable code from um, my VS from here. Okay, so we want to actually run this E6 property here. So let's um, reveal in File Explorer to find the location. Let's grab this location and pop it in here. And we're going to have to update the executable uh, file as well. Now I need to put double slashes in because slash in this JSON file denotes that it's trying to escape a character. Um, 
and that looks pretty cool. And the executable is called P6. And when I save this, it's going to want to save it as an admin. So let's retry as admin. And I think that has done. So let's um, close this down. But we want some proof. We want, um, I want to say something. I want to go uh, con console.writeline proof we are using the latest version from video. Wonderful. Now if I run this, it will um, update the executable in the uh, debug version. Oh no, this is gonna fail because I closed down my PBIX file, which is good, that's what I want, but that's okay. We compile the executable, trust me on that one. Close all this down. Now what we should be able to do now is open a brand new file in Power BI Desktop. I'm, I'm loading that in from my, desk, uh, from my taskbar right now. And the first thing we're going to check is under external tools, we'll go and check to see whether the button has been placed on the external toolbar. Fingers crossed. Okay, this is loading up. External tools. And there we have it. There's the DAX formatter button. This button didn't exist before. Uh, and let's go and have a look to s look at a measure. I know I've got a measure called rows processed that is pretty ugly. It's just one big long line, no carriage returns, no spaces, etc. So we click on external tools, we load the DAX formatter button, we get a, uh, the dialog should open off screen. Now what's happening here is we're actually passing the port number to the external tool. Um, so we don't need to worry about these things. And here we go. There's the line. Proof we're using the latest version from the video. Uh, the DAX was already formatted, except for this one version, uh, one, one measure that we, knew, we know that um, isn't formatted. Now if I run this again, I don't make any changes at all. I hit the DAX formatter button and boom, it, it doesn't send anything off to the external uh, API because what we do is we store a hash version of the text of every single DAX expression in what we call an annotation inside the model. And um, we only send it off to the API when things have changed because we don't want to overload the API and um, uh, you know, send things unnecessarily when, when we definitely have not changed anything. So, so this is kind of cool. And let's go and have a look to see um, what that annotation looks like. So I'm going to close this down. I'm going to go get the port number of my um, PBIX file that I currently have open. Uh, three port numbers. Change now to this. 63993. Let's jump back to Visual Studio Code. Let's put this in, in here. It has it changed slightly. And what we want to do is um, for every measure in the model, let's go and um, let's let's see if the measure requires formatting. So let's stop on this point. And I'm going to compile here. I'll put a breakpoint here, pressing the um, breakpoint button. We're running through the code, and boom, we stopped here. So what am I talking about in the annotation? Let's have a look at the um, the, the the model. Okay, so over here. We've got in memory, we can traverse um, what the model looks like. We've got the table in scope and we've got the measure in scope. Underneath the measure, we have a whole bunch of uh, methods, properties and details. Um, but the top one, nicely uh, at the top for alphanumeric, we can store a set of annotations. You can store more than one. In fact, there are two in this measure um, already. And the results view show that there's a, um, uh, uh, an annotation already there. I didn't put this one called format. This, I think, stores a whole bunch of interesting things that Power BI Desktop does. But here's my one, hashed expression. Um, and in hashed expression, we have doo -doo 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 -doo, um, this value here. So this is what um, gets computed by, an, uh, by a hash calculation further down in the, um, uh, in the functions. And this is what's stored. Now, if this has not, if, if the measure that we're grabbing from the actual model matches this, then we, the end user has not um, made a change. But if it's, if it's different, then go ahead and, and send it off and format it. And when we get the newly formatted version of back, create a hash over the top of that and store it in. And that's it. Um, annotations are pretty cool. Obviously, you can have more than one. Uh, pretty much every object in an, anal an analysis services model can store annotations. So you can go a bit crazy and 
do some pretty cool documentation and, and help alike um, uh, use it for, 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 for formatting. And um, yeah, so I don't, I don't need Visual Studio Code anymore. I can close this completely down and I can go back to my uh, Power BI desktop. I'll pick a different measure just for fun. Uh, say this one here and go like this and go like this and um, I can close this. I don't have Visual Studio open, but I can click on my external tools and run my Dex formatter and Boom, it can tell that all these other DAX expressions are being already formatted. This one had changed. You saw it in front of your eyes. Um, and that's it. So please, um, you know, give it a try. Give it a try. Uh, this, is a, this is really just starting you off. You can take this code and, and improve it and enhance it uh, however you like, you know. Big thanks to the um, DAX formatter provided by SQL BI. You know, please be respectful and, and, and don't overload it unnecessarily. Um, I want to also thank T. Patterson, my, my colleague, who I did the Dex Camp uh, session with. That was, you know, between him and I. That uh, in fact, he did most of the code here. I just um, uh, tidied up the icon and <laughs> put a few bits and pieces in, and, and, and written this up in a blog to share with you. So uh, yeah, let, let us know if you actually add this as a an external tool and, and find it useful. Um, yeah, great. And I hope you enjoyed this uh, short episode on Dex.tip, and look out for the next one. Bye bye.